Well, good morning, man. How's it going over there? It's good. Playing some bass. Hey, guys. Randy here again at Ovation Music and Studios. Um, I forgot to check the date before we started. It is Sunday, June 14th, 2020. The world is still in total shutdown. Not total. <laughs> not total shutdown. No. Nah, nah, it's actually it's, it's not as bad as we're, we're making it out to be. It, it, is, it's, it is as strange as we're making it out to be. And speaking of strange, we have Mr. Aaron Keene sitting right next to me here at his house. <laughs> what an intro. <laughs> <laughs> That's me. Half of this is just sit around and laugh. Um, so last week's video was uh, part one of Sweet Child of Mine. We actually planned on doing Sweet Child of Mine in one video. And there's just a lot to tear apart in this song. Ooh, my air conditioner turned off. That's going to be nice for the audio later. Um, and there's a lot to tear apart. And then we thought we'd do part two, and it's looking like there's going to be a part three. So we're just going to go into this, and we're going to keep it in, the, in that 30-minute range and talk about some of the things we didn't get to last time. Like some of these killer vocal harmonies, man. Aaron t tore apart these vocal harmonies and <laughs> cut some samples. Man, what did you find out when you were looking through this? Well, uh, listening to Sweet Child of Mine, there's like – there's little moments. I mean, obviously Axl Rose as a vocalist is like pretty revered for like his ability to, to put a lot of like grit and power and sing pretty high, like consistently. Uh, also sing really low too. He's got like croonery kind of power in some of his low stuff, which is nice. But um, I was kind of going through the song and I was like, well, you know, uh, my Axl Rose impersonation is uh, not really payable. <laughs> not really necessarily anything like that. But I thought, well, maybe rather than explaining kind of how he does, like, what about some of the little sweet moments that he kind of like sneaks in like a second or third voice that makes a nice little harmony part. So I just thought maybe that'd be an interesting thing just to talk about because it's, it's, it's sprinkled in little bits of the song. Um, so yeah, like in little parts of the verse and the chorus. So I did a couple of little spots here. And if you listen to the song um, really closely, I think this is the first one, like at the end of the first verse. Um, I'll probably break down and cry. If you'll notice I'm probably break down and cry, like there's a lead one, but on the words and cry, there's like a second higher voice that comes up. Um, like that little moment, he, of course he has a really high, you know, his range is pretty high. In this song, he goes to like, like two E flats above middle C. I don't think he goes any higher than that, but that's still pretty high for, for all the power's sake. But you'll hear this um, uh, this little one on top of it. I probably break down and cry. So there's one, there's one that's like way up there, which is uh, maybe not the highest one. There's oh man, and that, is that? Which that, that yeah, the melody's doing the suspension. Right? Is the melody doing that? The melody's doing the suspension. Perfect. Yeah, the cry and um and then the higher one is doing the third above. You get that? And cry. I'm not gonna belt it. <laughs> but, <laughs> and cry. Mike is not that. programmed for that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I, that's I just, that's getting up there, so that's a little you know, bit. It we is got, a we half got a step flat, but it's a B flat to A flat, or if you're playing an E flat, it looks like yeah, yeah. an A. Yeah, so a B flat up there. Well, not, not too bad. C, that, that's pretty normal soprano register. Um, yeah. There's not the... typically, not typical hold notes male um, register. Now, I did watch a, a more recent video of Axel singing this, and, and I did notice he, he's he's leaving out a lot of the higher stuff now, and yeah. he's cutting the phrases off way earlier like there's no none of the holds are there anymore yeah there's yeah something happened and well this is uh i guess this is a little subjective but something happened after i think it was in 2016 he was um singing for he was front manning for acdc for a while and i thought yeah. some of that stuff sounded really good i thought axel rose did a great job of covering acdc stuff because brian johnson was wasn't able to do the tour for a while um and you'll notice that um this kind of singing like uh, uh, is really hard. <laughs> like it's, it's it's really hard on the voice for a while. Now it obviously- it's like vocal weightlifting. Yeah, yeah. Um, and of course like ACDC like, uh, or Brian Johnson like Axl Rose, they spend a lot of time singing high. ACDC, Brian Johnson more so. But um, 
I'll probably break down and cry. Like that's even that's not super high, but spend some time in that area. Uh, and this one, he goes uh, up and way, way up higher, which I'll show in a second. But um, even on the harmony parts, I probably break down and, and cry. And cry. It's already and cry. Like you're already doing a little oh, bit man. of work. Not too bad, but like it gets. I'll show some more. Well, how how much worse does this get? <laughs> yeah, <you can> see. <laughs> it certainly gets a lot harder. Uh, Axl Rose does a great, which everyone knows. One of his sounds is like doing these swells, of like 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 the oh, like it goes like oh, 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 and you hear like little like yeah, and he pulls like it. That. It's almost like he goes from his throat voice to his to his nasal voice. It might when be a little doing bit of that technique well. too, but you'll hear, I, I you know, I did a oh, 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 sweet love of mine. So I had one that went below, which you'll hear on that one. There's like thirds on top and they do the little, oh, 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 oh. and then there's another one that comes underneath it, um, which I just kind of cut it really quick just because that's what I heard in the track. But you'll hear just these little moments of just like two parts kind of most of the time it's above his melody. He'll do like a third above or okay. um, usually it's a third above. Um, but sometimes it just changes depending on what the phrase is. And one of them, there's like a voice that comes in from like below um, on that particular one, which, you know, I, I think sometimes these I don't I don't know how they probably he probably just kind of sang a part that sounded nice with it and they chopped it up in the studio probably. And kind of like, oh, yeah. So, this is for all the gear recording guys out there. This is late 80s, right? Is this 88? I don't, I don't know. So, somebody it's definitely late 80s. Somebody right? put it in the comments. Let me know what it is. It's definitely late 80s um, when they're recording this. And a lot of people think of music recording and editing and tuning vocals and things like that as a 2000s thing that that started in the 2000s the only reason that existed in the 2000s was because they started doing this in the 60s yes and they started <laughs> like physically they'd take a razor blade they take the tape take a razor blade and you cut the tape and put it together now the complexity of the cuts you could do with that isn't what we can do now and the speed and how long it takes to do it is astronomical um yeah. the pink floyd took six months doing dark side of the moon yeah you know and a lot of that a lot of tape splicing and things going on to mm -hmm. get that done so you know when you spend 12 hours a day splicing one or two takes together to make the, the song sound better you know and by the time we get to the late 80s we're talking about cutting individual sections of solos in and out and individual notes and vocal melodies mm -hmm. uh and and really advanced stuff and it just takes a long time to do yeah i'm glad i didn't have to do it on tape <laughs> I mean, I'm like being super lazy with it. I just like pulled it up and like sang a couple and I was like, no, I didn't like that take. So just like hard cut. <laughs> hard so, cut, like, yeah. I, cer I certainly like for me and, you know, for anybody in this day and age, if you, if you, if you have, you know, if you want to put in the best take of it, it's, you know, and cut it around is like, it's so easy. I mean, yeah, it's yeah. so easy that you can get lazy with it. So I mean, occasionally I get the, I, I kind of want to just hire somebody else sometimes in the studio. <laughs> <laughs> just to do that part, you know? Um, and, and, and as far as I know, there was no ghosting on this record, but I, I wasn't there. And I'm so we're not even going to. No, it's not. Let's no. just stay away from that. <laughs> yeah, it's not even supposed. I had a couple other parts that I thought were. Uh, yeah, were yeah. More. So I'll just kind of run through them. But you got that. Did you get that really, really high note? Doesn't he go up to like an two F sharps above middle C at one point in this? Um, uh, I'll have to remember. I, I, don't, I don't think so, but, but he, I'm, he's certainly capable of that. If he's singing ACDC songs, he's at least going up to like uh, the G. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Two Gs above middle C at the very least. That <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like he's got to at least be able to get up there, which, and certainly with more power than that sound was, but. Yeah, like, that's actually the F sharp, sorry. <laughs> Oh, there's the G. Oh, right. I forgot. Ah, that. Yeah. <laughs> that half a step makes a huge difference at that point, man. Half a step's a long way up there. 
<laughs> yep. It's me, bye yai. Yeah, I like his bye yais, you know? Bye like yais. Yeah. It's me, bye yai. Yeah, though, to quietly wow. pass me bye wow. yai. Which has a pass me bye yai. Now, typically, when I've done vocal lessons, vocal teachers have, have gotten on to me about making one syllable words, two syllables in general. Uh, and, <laughs> and it's probably from listening to 90s grunge music. Um, a lot of those guys with their uh, R's on every word sound oh. <laughs> right. uh this guy he puts three syllables on the word bye <laughs> bye yai. yeah there's more than one time he does that but i mean you know it's style right the style man it, it makes and it ends the phrase nicely uh mm -hmm. you know it makes it sound conclusive to me yeah i think and, so and so are all the parts moving in the same direction that's parallel motion he's kind in, of in going, this oh. in this part yeah yeah it's all this is another one of those that it's just thirds coming down or well, I guess it's it's more of a pentatonic. So you've got a bye eye is going ba um is six bye eye that's six five three in the key of that. Okay. Uh then bye is four three one. So your melody is doing four three one. Oh, uh, so he's just walking down the well, well, when you when the melody does four, the harmony does six. So that's a third apart. And then he goes down to three, the melody goes to five. And it's one of those things where if you're going to harmonize, it ends up feeling like part of a pentatonic scale. So, uh, bye, I, bye, I. So the, 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 the top one. Pass me by, I. You can hear, you can hear it's, uh, um, it feels like the harmony is doing like a, a, a D flat pentatonic like a major pentatonic kind of thing because it jumps yeah. that third. Exactly, but it jumps that third because, well, the melody jumps a third. It goes from four and bye, I, so uh, bye, I. So then you got six, five, three. Exactly. That's all. Yeah. Pass me by, I. So that's kind of a cool thing. If you're, if you're working on some, some guitar ideas you guys can do is, these singers actually sing notes and, and you can play those. <laughs> Actual notes. I, yeah, exactly. it, man, you know, I say it kind of funny and goofy like that because that never really occurred to me till I was you no, know, no. playing for 15 years. And now I go back and go, man, all those kids that learned to play the vocal melody, they were really smart because they got <laughs> they learned to play more musical in a lot of ways. Yeah, well, it's like I had, I remember the, you know, like, an, like it's a very silly epiphany, but it was like, oh, all the notes they're singing, I can find here. Yeah, you know, yeah, I, mean? I can like, play all the notes they're singing on my instrument. <laughs> yeah, it was like a fancy that, but it's like, it's important to know. Like, uh, I feel like a lot of people that like um, study keyboard have a, a real good like advantage of, of having. You seem a, to like, automatically do that, right? Say what? They automatically do that when they study keyboards. Well, no, well, I'm just like, um, I have guitar, like guitar students, like you visualize, like you try to like, you think about how melodies fit and you can like, you get fretboard brain and you're like, oh, okay, yeah, the melody feels like this, you know, moving around. Um, and then keyboard brain where you kind of like, you see it laid out in front of you. Maybe not as much of a finger motion that you think about as much as what like the keyboard itself looks like but like learning how to where those vocal parts lie like you can find it all on your instrument um yeah um and you can go so far as like um i mean hit song like smells like teen spirit no bridge it's just uh, the guitar solo and the guitar solo is literally just the verse <laughs> And he just plays that vocal melody. Yeah, yeah. When on, on the guitar. And yeah, yeah. It, and it's beautiful. It works great. Yeah. If you're if you're looking for you want to have a guitar solo, but you want it to, you know, it's not really necessarily an avenue for improvisation. Like steal that vocal melody. Maybe do something mm. a little guitaristic technically with it. You know, like do a bend on the guitar, like. You know, like as he does in that in that case. Yeah, yeah, he uses the you bends know. in a couple places. Incor or incorporate bends and hammer-ons or things that make it feel like a guitar. But if you do that, copying the vocal melody, you got yourself a nice little instrumental break. Yeah. You know? Now, in that in that smells like Teen Spirit solo, Kurt only uses one type of bend. He bends it up and then down. <laughs> you know that those are, and, and they're both just. 
up and then back down. Um, here in Smells Like Teen uh, in Sweet Child of Mine, Slash is these bins are all over the place. No, there, yeah. There's up and down bins, up bins where you start up and then come down, and you bend and you hold it up and then bring it down and <laughs> bring it up and stop it. It's everything, every kind of bend imaginable. Um, I would question some of the tuning. Um, <laughs> but I, I would also say that my ear is not perfectly in tune and tuning's somewhat subjective anyways. Yeah. There's wiggle room. There, there's lots of wiggle room. Sometimes it has to be out of tune. Pet sounds. Go, <laughs> go check it out. This is the intro to Pet Sounds record. If, if it was in tune, the record wouldn't be as good. <laughs> so are you are you ready to talk guitar or do you want Yeah, to yeah, since we're doing here, I bet the first half of this dug through. Ooh, sorry guys, I'm got that mic a little bit hot. Do you want to talk about like the chord changes beneath it or do you want to just jump right into I, it? I think we need to know what the chord changes are. It, 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 when you're studying solos you you have to know what the chord changes are underneath or there's no point in learning the solo there there is a, a sort of how would you say it like an environment <laughs> yeah yeah a relationship and that relationship is represents an, an environment and without the entire environment the solo really doesn't make sense yeah it's it, and not that when you're playing and you have to analyze it like you know like this note against this chord feels like this. It's something that with enough practice, it's just kind of intuitive where you decide to go. Yeah, it is. So if you just learn the chords and then learn what notes you're playing over the chords, you, you, you don't, you don't really have to go any further than that. No. But like for I, those that are writing it, you know, like who wrote, like when Slash wrote the solo for the parts that, especially the first part of that solo, you know, there's, there's chord tones that he lands on of very specific chords. Yeah. So let's take a look at those chords. This is the first chord to E minor. Yeah. This section. yeah. Or we have E minor C. Oh, this uh, yeah, this right. So yeah, yeah, e minor, the chords. Let's, yeah, E minor C B and then A minor. And it actually does lead in with um, which, which I, I just feel like mentioning this the at the end of the last chorus before the bridge. Yeah, where you, hey, I guess it, child of my eye, hear that. Like you, they do the they do the half step, the D sharp hit there. Now, da, 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 uh, e. I didn't. I I knew that was there, but I didn't really analyze it. Is that a D sharp chord, or is he playing the B over D sharp? It's just a single note. I, oh, I they're just say. all playing roots. Okay. Uh, <laughs> I, I I would need to listen closer to hear if he's actually doing it as a power chord. He likely would would be doing it as a power chord, but maybe not. Yeah, but, he, I, but I what he's that. doing is he's superimposing the seven diminished chord. You know, so if you want to make it classical, he can. <laughs> and then it's yeah, classical. I don't think they, I don't think they were thinking about that. <laughs> I, think, I don't I, think they were thinking about that at all. Oh man! So, so so we spent all this time talking about how important these chords were, and I'm trying to go through them in my head, and going, man, I don't even really know the chords in this section. Well, that that, 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 that that you're going to it does happen after the wall. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right before, it. and then we get the E minor, C, B, A minor. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that B is major. Correct. Right. Yeah. So this is in uh, E harmonic minor. So if you want to break down the scale that he's coming from, it's uh, in the low position. Uh, uh, and you can play with those all over the place. There's so many harmonic minor patterns you can use. But does he ever play a D natural in that solo, though? Anywhere, he he doesn't ever sit on a D natural at any point. Uh, there is one point at the beginning of the solo where he bends the D natural up to E and back down and comes back through it. And that's the only time he even plays the D natural. Every other time he plays the D sharp. Okay. So, so let's, let's just take a look at it. Let's see if I can play through this first half. Um, you know, we're, we're transcribing here. I'm trying to be honest with you guys and pick these things out by ear. I really kind of feel terrible that I never learned this. You know, you're, this is, this especially this first half of this solo, this is not the hardest solo on the planet. You guys, if you've been playing two or three years, you should probably try, you should break this down and try and play it. Um, 
if you want somebody to teach it to you, we'll be glad to show it to you. It's probably easier to teach than to transcribe by ear right out the gate. Um, the transcriptions are pretty strange online, so you may have to do it by ear to find good positions. So, but let's check it out here. We got. It. Nice. And then it gets, and then it gets fast. <laughs> yeah, the wall part. So yeah, you hear the only lick that has the D natural is the, and, and that's yeah. every other time he plays D sharp, but he's almost immediately bending them up to E and then back down. Yeah, and we should, we should, we should mention that like the solo does use a harmonic minor scale. Um, mm -hmm. I. I just throwing this out there. I think it's almost, if I were, say I was a guitarist and I was like, oh, I, I'm playing a solo and it's got these exact four chord changes in it. Um, I think what is something that if, is maybe a, the most important thing to note is that the only time he plays that D sharp is when the B chord is happening. It's yes. not it's not happening during the other chords. So even though if you're approaching the scalarly, that's fine. But know that if you if you're using like a harmonic minor scale, it we're only saying that he it's not like we're hanging out on an E and he's using that scale over one note in which it's giving you really that flavor of a harmonic minor scale. It's just that there is a chord tone idea, meaning when he's on the B major chord, the third chord of the song. When he goes to the when he gets to the third chord right here, that third chord that's when he plays progression, the that's when a D sharp happens. And if he's not on that chord, he's not playing a D sharp, which is important to note because if you play a D sharp more than likely over that time when they're on a C chord, it will probably sound like butt. And you might not know why, but it's like over those traditional chord changes, you'll get like um, a sound that may not gel at all with that C major chord that's happening just before it. Yeah, I, I, there's like two times where he passes through the D sharp when he's not on that chord, but it's, I wouldn't count that as that, like when he does the, no, that happens on the B. No, it's it's always on the B. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's definitely like, uh, um, even though it's, it's, a, it's a scale name, it's more important to you as a soloist constructing a solo that is memorable and highlights the changes of a song, you got to know when those outside notes are happening in the chords that are being played. Because that's when there's a great time for you to uh, to make a really spicy sound. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, and, and this solo is blessed with a chord that's not really in the key of E minor or C major. The, the actual chord in the key of, or D major. Yeah, it's D major, right? This is D mixolydian, so it's kind of a G basis well, this would be a b minor chord normally though right but i would i would probably say that this solo is uh, a a key change which we didn't talk about that but yeah uh, yeah yeah we, we sort of talked about it last week but yeah it's it's an e minor uh um, yeah yeah and for those of you in nashville it's in g major okay, <laughs> okay. <laughs> nashville knows nashville's fine with that <laughs> but no but so so like the uh child of mine right there like we're saying we're in the key of d the melody yeah. goes to a d the chord kind of resolves to d a lot of people like the you know sweet home alabama complex they'll say d c and g we're in the key of g but uh, you know randy you and you and i are we agree in, that we see it in the key of d and here yeah, is, is the one chord yeah it's not, there is room to believe and hear it in another key, but the melody is so strong to me to move back to D. So it's like, yes, the first part of the song, even though the chords that are in it are diatonic to the key of G, meaning that all the chord tones fit in a G major scale, the song is, the, the key of the song is D. But when we hit the solo, the ba -na, uh, 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 and then we're, the solo starts with these chords, now it feels like we're in the key of G or E minor. Like that's there. Yeah. It's almost like, you know, it's almost like they're like, oh, it feels like a key change 
And and that and and the note they use to set that key change up is. Oh, the note that they use to set that up. Well, our, if they're doing the half step, they're using the seventh. They're of, using of, the D sharp. E. They're using that D sharp to set up that key change. Yeah. The the weird note, the weirdest note. It it, it really does set it up, and it also has a rhythmic setup by stopping. Exactly. You, you re it really has a lot more power. Sorry, that was way out of tune. Oh, yeah, I, oh, yeah, I, yeah, just, yeah. I just played it out of tune. That's that's even worse. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't think it was. You're fine. Right. The, uh, the the but if the the one of the mo main ways to like get into a new key is a five one relationship, um, where it's like in this case B seven to E. That would be like a traditional way to get into the key of E. Well, which that's like the really like theory way of understanding how we got to the e chord change yeah. the fact that they hit a d sharp that's the third of a b7 yeah. and, it's, and that's, that's the leading tone that that takes you to e minor nobody honestly nobody's thinking about it like that nobody's thinking about it like that no i i think the motion made sense if we go for if we're trying to go from here to here we play the note in between I, I mean, yeah. anybody can follow that logic, I, I think. That's pretty simple sure. logic. And, and I think that's a lot of times the way I think about things. I go, well, I'm trying to go from here to here. What's the shortest answer? Yeah. Um, and then sometimes I'll go, well, what's the longest answer? And you get sort of the Black Sabbath cadences where you get the, <laughs> you know, what's, what's the furthest away you can go and still get there? Uh, yeah. Well, that feels more think. like you're just harmonizing a minor pentatonic scale, but. <laughs> you know what I mean? But that's that's fine. <laughs> so this, he sets up the key change with our special note, the D sharp, and then he continues to play the D sharp over and over again every single time that a B chord, B chord comes around. And, and he, he's pretty consistent with landing on that D sharp when the B chord comes. Mm -hmm. Now, um, in, the, in the next section, which I don't mean to jump ahead, but just for a brief moment, after the wah part comes in, there's no more B major chord. There's no more B major chord. And thus you don't hear the D sharp anymore. No more D sharp. He goes so, straight to E minor pentatonic uh, with a couple. Couple twos. A couple nines, yeah. Yeah, a couple nines. Nines, yeah, yeah. Um, sometimes when you, guys, when you study music, everybody gets a slightly different terminology at different places. Uh, <laughs> it, it's the second scale degree. Um, but where I went to school, we studied them as chord tones and called them nines. Oh, okay. There is no second scale degree. It's part of the chord, especially the way he sits on it. I feel like it's really yeah. the first. The first chord is E minor nine in, in my head. It's just... <laughs> yeah. So, and not only do they not have the B in there, which gives us our D sharp note, but they put the D chord back into the chord progression, right? right? And then it does C. Exactly, yeah. yeah. The bass is like. You hear that little light goes to the A chord and then it goes C and then D. And they even like, they goes to G, but they do the bend kind of like you would like even the bass part is doing a little bit of that. Yeah, just the, that. And the guitar is playing. Or is he doing the bend too? I hear him doing the bend too. Okay. Uh -huh. I, I'll have to go back and listen to that. that. Yeah. Well, there may be like there's two guitars in there. So. <laughs> there's 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 room for production there so i did like can, while we're talking about the where did we go part of the song can i can i just can i just bring up uh, can, can i show a couple more vocal things the amount of time you spent working on these vocal things i think you have to show them <laughs> I, I did, well if it sounded and, like and, i spent a lot of time and guys um, leave it in the comments do you want to hear aaron sing below middle c <laughs> or C below middle C. <laughs> uh, I can sing the C below middle C. That's not bad, but the one below that is not going to ever. <laughs> well, that, that that's you have to be. 
J.D. Sumner from Elvis's. So the, the <laughs> general singers. public can sing a middle C. Pretty much everybody on this planet can make a middle C come out. The C two times two octaves below middle C is not something everybody can do. Yeah. <laughs> physically, you cannot physically do it. Um, sorry. Yeah it, it, yeah, it narrows a little bit when you go that low. Yeah. Um, so like everyone knows like the the where did we goes. I was like listening to the song, so I'll, I'll like play a little bit of it because yeah, well, I'm, I'm not going to play the song, but I'll play like me just kind of like croaking out because it's that's about as low. Actually, I didn't know I could sing as low as a G flat. And it's pretty like, you know, bottom. Does he go all the way down there? Yeah, yeah. The, um, where, the, yeah, it's got the uh uh oh. Where do we oh where do we go? Where do we go now? Like I can barely I can't get the now right now. But where I do it. we I go? I can just barely get it. Where do we go now? Where do we go? It's really like that now is pretty hard for me. But when you listen to the song, you can hear these these where do we goes. There's also a part um where you hear them say uh which is maybe kind of creepy but they do the sweet child of mine i'm like oh. <laughs> the tracks, that's, yeah. that's an 80s thing though what uh, uh bon jovi did that too oh we still use whisper tracks with, with i know but like uh, more blatant what's that i always made fun of this in um well they're they're using the whisper tracks like not with the lead vocal. Yeah. And a lot right. of times nowadays when you hear a whisper track, like I hear them all the time on Ariana Grande songs, there's always a whisper track, but it's just copying the lead vocal and just making yeah. the lead vocal more airy. In this case, they like, it's way, you way hear it, you know, that, that like, I always, I always made fun of the <laughs> one you give love a bad name because I thought it was like the creepiest line they could have done a whisper track on. <laughs> <laughs> the uh, schoolboy's dream, you act so shy. That little part of the schoolboy's dream, you hear the like a uh, schoolboy's dream. And I was like, oh, God. <laughs> that's the thing you whisper? I guess so. God, why? Uh, so he's got this going on. Now, above this, he gets pretty aggressive with some of these ad libs. Because this is, I, I don't think this section is, quote, written out to me. It doesn't sound like something that's written out. It sounds like. He has a, a really good understanding of how his vocal cords work. He's only got a small group of words that he's singing, and then he's just going to ad lib melodies over those. Yeah, it's mostly a minor pentatonic scale. Uh, yeah. he, he's doing the bluesy vocal thing. Oh, oh where, where do, do we go? go? Where do we go now? Oh, where, where do, do we, we go, go now? And his low voice sounds pretty good, the now thing. I'm just trying to. You know, again, I don't have an Axl Rose impression. And, and that's so. you imitating him. Yeah, yeah. For, for so all you guys. Ap are, apologies. Here. Apologies. I'm no, imperson <laughs> I'm no impersonator. But but I grabbed a couple more of the lines with the sweet child line that goes like, Where do we go? Sweet oh, child. Where do we go? <laughs> you, you <laughs> which, again, we can't play the track for copyright reasons, but there's this part that you hear and it just goes like, Sweet child. <laughs> you're like okay <laughs> that's that's fine and it's like that's there's awful. nothing else in the track it's happening oh so good like in the front you know they do that no um, it's pretty quiet the guitar at that point is minimally playing through notes of the chord with a clean sound yeah you can go way way hear it why is my scrubbing playing we go now and then the other yeah, that's the section. Yeah, yeah. Where do we go now? Oh, where do we go? Yeah, so there's, there's a, yeah. So sorry, you're like up. constipated. A sweet child, oh, yeah. where and do we go now? Oh, 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 where do we go now? Getting the, oh, which like, I don't sound like him doing it. Well, right. he's got different but, vocal cords. That's understandable. But, but no, you're well, I mean, notes. Now, when you're singing there, in that register, I, I see you're using a lot of power there. Can you even, is that even possible to do it that nasally and, and that aggressive quietly? Uh, no, which I'm doing. It's oh, a different kind of sound. Uh, no, <laughs> like there's, there's, there's ways you can do it. He, he does, Axel has a great way, like, when he goes into the high stuff sometimes it's big and bold sounding but it's sometimes it has like a like a a really thin honk to it it's it actually can be it can be really delicate or it could be delicate for that kind of level of grittiness um yeah so 
that that's him man he's you know he's he's one of those like pillars of rock vocal same thing like you know i don't know <laughs> he's got some range you know but um, his range I, I tried is... my hand at some of it you know to kind of like grab to do how he does it but i often just end up turning it into you know so if, if somebody was going to sit down and practice these vocals and try and get those ad libs um is, is there things we should watch out for because his range even in this song this is probably the one of the songs with the least amount of range and it's still we're talking four octaves <laughs> well, yeah, <laughs> and, and not oh four G's. We're talking five separate G's that he sings almost. Yeah, I think from um, the background vocals to the lead vocals, like, <laughs> and that's a that's a lot of notes in there. Well, so I think I think, um, and this is a, a hypothesis. I have not lived with this song as like I have not lived with it as a performer really ever. I just kind of grabbed some stuff to make or this discussion make sense. But I would say like, if you're going for, um, and this, I, I won't turn this into a vocal pedagogy thing too much, but there's definitely like, when you want to sound powerful and you want to sing as high as he does, it like, um, some people think power, like when you sing low in your voice, like, okay, this is my sound is big. I'm gonna take that up. And it's really, it's not necessarily like that. Um, it's more like find a sound that is not weak, but that is clean. And when you find that clean sound, then learn how to give it that extra twanginess that'll make it distort. So if I had like, um, uh, where do we go now? Oh, like if I'm singing it like that, oh, that's like my cleaner way of doing it. Where do we go now? Oh, like you see the, the, the part that adds distortion is something that it when you do it clean it it the configuration of it needs to, you need to know what it feels like to do it and i don't mean weak like where do we go now you can still do a clean sound that is not what people call a head voice or you can talk to me personally <laughs> to find out because i yeah I, yeah, I, yeah and i i just i just thought some people would be interested in some of these ideas and things to watch for um yeah, practicing like, clean clean practicing your vocals clean is a great idea yeah, like to, to keep it very simply, there, there's a lot more detail to say than that. But like when I was, which, uh, uh, when he does the, uh, oh, like he's going up that high, oh, where do we go now? Like those, oh, where do we go now? Like I've, I'm using more grit than I need to, to, to copy him exactly. But my biggest advice is if you're trying to, learn a song that uses grit everywhere like this, like learn it, learn it clean, learn how to learn go notes. to all those high notes and low notes clean first, because um, adding that extra grit takes a little bit of, uh, I don't know if you're just learning it. If you naturally sing with a grit and you can get up there and do it, then by all means, just freaking just go for it. But, but I think a lot of people like um, uh, feel like that's something have a hard time switching that. So like, it's like, let's make it distorted now. And I would say that one thing mm. that I realized trying to pick out some of the song is that the feeling I have when I want to be gritty, even when Axel sings clean on the, on the, on this track, which he's not gritting the whole time, but even like, um, the, on the, she's got a smile and it seems to me when you've got the, she's got a smile every now and then you'll hear, she's got a, you'll, or, well, not, you won't hear that, but you'll hear, she's got a <laughs> and you'll hear a little bit of that in there. Yeah. Sometimes that like just happens like as part of that positioning you're doing. Yeah, it happened to be in that performance but, and they kept it too. But it, but it sounds good, but it's like the, the mode you use, you can do it clean, now you can add grit, but like that same configuration of what it feels like to be gritty that configuration in in a weird way can be also sung clean <laughs> and he kind of stays in that little mode so little bits of grit come in and out when you listen to the verse of the song sometimes it's clean and just a couple words every now and then go like that with a little bit of grit and it sounds great and that's because he's he's figured out a way to do that to get that that you, you can sing it clean yeah. but he but or but he does it with that grittiness but the grit comes in and out and then he dials an extra of whenever he wants it yeah, I, I think he clearly displays that he practices a lot, no matter what. Oh, sure. Yeah, I mean, he's, um, he's, a, oh, guys. he's a real male diva, you know? I mean, practice. Yeah. 
<laughs> practice. So practice. Anyway, that's, you know. <laughs> my, that's my that's my advice. You know. Also, yeah. don't don't fear the breaking of your voice. Like that's another thing. Don't fear that. Kind of embrace it. It's yeah, really, it, if really you find the edges, it's it's kind of easier to tell where the middle is if you know where the edges are. Exactly. So yeah, just go for it. Um, as say. far as learning the solo on the guitar stuff, guys, I mean, get good at bending and get fa his position. If you use Slash's fingerings, these position changes can be a little bit awkward. Yes. Um, and he's holding these notes out all the way through in some cases and doing huge position jumps with the same finger. Like uh, in the middle of the solo, he goes from this 15. <laughs> And I mean, even though you have a split second to make the shift because he stops the note early, that's a long way. It's a really easy miss to make, yeah. especially when you're coming off of, what is he coming off of? A 12 fret bend with a third finger. So he bends yeah. all three notes with a third finger. One here. <laughs> <laughs> Two of them are half step bends, meaning they're going from one note to the next fret. And this one's a whole step. And this one's a half step. And you, know, you know, that bending with the same finger switching positions, that can be give you a lot of trouble if you don't work on that by itself. Yes. And, and because you mentioned that, I, I just want to say, like, I was lucky when I first started playing guitar that all the solos I wanted to learn were by artists that tuned a half step down. It, it <laughs> and, it on. and I'll tell you, if you are, if you are a guitarist and you're trying to get better at bending at getting vibrato in your bend that feels good, or just pitch accuracy with your bend, tuning a half step down is no joke. It makes a very big difference to a young guitarist to getting your bends in tune and accurate because the less tension there, it is like, it is way easier to control the string. And it's something that when you tune back up to standard, you know, like once you find it, you have it. Uh, yeah, it doesn't, the distance isn't that much different on the 10, on 10s in standard tuning than, than 10s in E flat. The, yeah, the, the distance to make a half step feels about the same. Yeah, but the tension, man, is like. It's, it's, it's so, way easier. Um, yeah. So, I, I mean, you'd have to check each guitar manufacturer individually. I, if I'm not mistaken, Gibson uses 10s as their stock string size, and Fender uses 9 as their stock string size for the two basic companies. PRS, I believe, is 9s. Um, I'm currently playing Les Paul with 8s tuned down a half step. Yeah, so you can... You can. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I can rip the strings right off the fretboard. Uh, actually, heavy. these kind of feel like nines. They actually feel heavy, so maybe they're not. <laughs> they, they kind well. of feel heavy to me, so. <laughs> but I play <laughs> really, really light with my left hand. I, I don't even, even in the guitars that I've had the longest, I don't even have dents in the fretboards where the strings have touched the fretboards. Yeah. No. So I, I see a lot of doing repairs. We see lots of acoustic guitars with the string and the, and the wood underneath the string is actually carved out <laughs> from how hard the person is squeezing. You, you, you only have to get the string to the fret. Anything yeah. past that is out of tune. Yeah. <laughs> if your guitar is set up properly. Yes. <laughs> so get your guitar set up properly, put some lighter strings on it, work on these bins. Um, this one and he does tend to use his slash seems to be using second finger and third finger to bend yeah. almost the whole time in the song i haven't seen anything with first finger bends or pinky bends um my my assumption is that it, it has to do with how you can weight your fingers the third finger and second finger can be easily supported with the fingers behind it the pinky doesn't really get the support the same way and the first finger can't have any support yeah, you know, I mean, I've seen, I, I would be surprised if he didn't use any first finger, but, but like for like a half step bend on the G string, you know? Probably on this, like, I use first finger. Yeah. Well, that's in the after our section we're talking about here. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, exactly. that's kind of what I was thinking. But, but definitely. Yeah, not, maybe not, like he's fours. not a pinky bender. But he's not bending the the fours 
all the way a half step and he's not bending them fast either. He, he shorts them. He shorts both of them oh, okay. and, and does them both. They're extra slow. Now, part of that is feel, part of it is design of the song. He doesn't quite get there. It's just a, a little a little <laughs> bit short to my ear. Um, and then like sure. the, the third finger bends, they seem to go, all of them go past the note. <laughs> <laughs> so when he hits this 15, Justo. it doesn't stop on the A. It kind of does that and just goes slightly past it. Well, that's only that's that, that's bluesy right there. There's your blue note. He made it. <laughs> yeah, quarter step high on the third. Been the third a quarter step high. I, that Steve Ray Vaughan does that quite a bit. With that, just bend the note slightly sharp and then come back to it. Or well, and that's the, what we did in the bass part too, though. <laughs> yeah, and the bass player's been in the quarter step there. <laughs> There's a half step. <laughs> These must. This I, I got to say, this must be nine because these actually feel they're burning holes in my fingers. So it, it has to be nines on it right now. <laughs> Normally, I play eights in standard tuning. Uh, even on seven string, my bass string is. I'm pretty sure it's a 48, where typically you see seven string guys playing 64s and 70s on the B string. Yeah. Um, the reason my seven string is baritone scale, so I don't need a super thick string to get the tension that's already 27 inches long. And then gotcha. the string itself, it's reverse headstock, so it's 36 inch string. So it doesn't okay. take very much tension to, or it doesn't, it takes a lot of tension to even get a thin string up to tune. Right. So that has nothing to do with any of this. Second half of the solo. <laughs> it's still interesting. Was... I'll tell you guys, you're probably not going to learn the second half of this solo in one week, especially if you're transcribing it by ear. <laughs> if, if, you, if, you, you if you have a job and other gigs to play, you, you, it's not going to happen. This, this is uh, It takes a few hours to get the second half of this solo. Um, I do want to quick take a second at some techniques you can use to start learning it. Um, the one is scales sequences. <laughs> Typically, when I see the scale sequence played, um, we can do it with any scale. So G major, we start on a G here. We go one, two, three, four. And then we start on two and go two, three, four, five. So the same pattern. And then three. In this pattern, slash is going to slide that top note. So you just pick three times and slide. And then you apply it to the other scales. So he's using harmonic minor. And just oh, yeah. practice that technique. And not just with the scale, practice it with the other scales. This is one that you can take to your other solos. Um, another one to look at is this pentatonic bend thing. This is a great lick. <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm glad I finally learned it. Uh, Aaron's introduced me to the idea that the picking pattern should be up, down, pull off, down. So that would be up. Or so start. We got the bend. We start with a bend, yeah. and then we go up, down. Pull off, down, and that down is the next bend. Yeah. For the economy pickers out there, up, up, down. But with the economy picking, there's a timing issue with where the pull off gets placed. Oh. That, that feels a little bit strange. Uh, yeah. It is easier to time going up, down. Gotcha. I, I know for me, which uh, I would happily like not make you do my picking idea of it and I would do it myself. <laughs> I, I'm sorry. I need to, I need to, I, I, it would take no, me, no, no, no. I don't mind learning different picking minutes. ideas. Uh, typically when I take a part of solo, um, especially when I find a section I like or a technique I like, I, I try and do it other ways as, as well. Um, yeah. It, see how it feels different. Yeah, because this pattern. That's cool. 
alternate pick every note. That's how I've kind of always played this thing. And that's up, down, up, down. Yeah, yeah. Great yeah. alternate picking. It sounds completely different than... I'm trying your pattern. And that time, that times, that's the uh, sweet that's the idea. And yeah. it's, it, it times really funny. You, you kind of have, you have to relax to do it that way. You can be a little more tense on the other ones, though. You can't be tense and play this fast. <laughs> And remember, it's a it it is timed. It's in time. This is one of the best rhythms he plays in the entire song, as far as accuracy goes. Yeah, it's pretty great. It's locked in. Yeah, that one's um, pretty great. And then the other section that you can use, because you can take that lick everywhere. That, that's why I'd say use it. <laughs> You know, you don't have to repeat it all the time. The other lick is the pull off hammer on thing. Oh, yeah. Like that little. That's the whole basis for how I play guitar. I mean, <laughs> hammer on, pull off, off, move strings, pull off, hammer on. Is, is, is I mean, that's. I mean, you can do that forever in a million different patterns. So take those parts individually because this section is super fast. Um, and, we'll, and I'll continue transcribing it and I'll start practicing it this week. And hopefully next week we can have the video where we actually perform the fast section of the solo with the walk out. <laughs> we, got, we got off easy. We got off easy. We got off easy. It's so much depth in this song, guys. If you enjoy these more in-depth videos, Please let us know. We are going to just break down some simple solos for you as well. We're going to do some videos on that. Um, if you got other ideas, let us know. I'm giving you outro music. <laughs> Can I dance to the outro music? <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> we good? Oh, I'm just enjoying the outro music, man. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for hanging out with us today. Yeah. He stopped my outro music. I was going to give a nice little. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I was going to take him to church, man. <laughs> Guys, please be safe out there. Uh, make sure you're paying attention to what's going on. Treat other people very pleasantly. We love you all, too. Leave us some comments, some likes, some shares, uh, and send us your ideas. We'll see you next time. <laughs>